down here in the bottom left, the blue Protoss from the Netherlands. It is, of course, Harston. The man who can be tanks. Over here on the right top side of Overgrowth, we're looking at the main base of the Terra. And we saw on the main stage earlier as well, he looked on point, has pretty much looked on point throughout the entirety of this day. It's Maru. And I'm kind of giggling because I see the mini-map with all this. <laughs> There's a red dot where there isn't supposed to be one. Well, that's up to Maru to just decide, I suppose. And he's decided there is going to be a <laughs> barracks there. And That's true. I mean, if you're Maru, you can basically just do <laughs> barracks wherever the hell you want. You just do whatever you want. He was that one guy where after everybody stopped doing two racks proxies, he was like, no, it's still good. <laughs> I can make it work. You guys just suck. But it'll be interesting to see what he decides to go with here. It is going to be double gas. And this is going to be scouted by Hurstum. He's the double gas. He's no barracks. So. so I think in general the best answer you could have is an early robo against this. Because I think the robo is good against everything. I mean, certain tanks and <laughs> uh, obviously liberator pushes are still very scary to go up against. But I think if you don't have a robo, there are just too many things that straight up count to you. Especially cyclones are incredibly powerful against gateway units early on. So I'm kind of just expecting a, a robo here. Could potentially be a Stargate, as Oracles into Void Rays are pretty much super solid defense against any sort of one base Terran as well. And I kind of wonder if Harstim is still going to drop the expand, or if he's just going to be like, well, if you're proxying me, I really don't need to expand. I'm just going to stay on one base a little longer. Well, look at that. That barracks looks like it's on its way to float to the natural. And we do see the Stargate coming down anyway, so it's not going to matter just yet. I suppose he's going to get that barracks a little bit closer here. That's Next. actually really bad for Harstam, because now Harstam can't expand. <laughs> he only has a single Zealot, and the yeah. Zealot is obviously not going to help him against this Reaper. The Reaper could potentially even take out this Zealot. This is already starting to look pretty bad. Not only has the Stargate been revealed, but he's not going to be able to expand forever. Yeah. It's a really rough group for Harstim if he's having this much trouble against Terran and he has to face three Terrans. This is uh, two of them are, are, of which are very, very strong, Maru and Marine Lord. I have not seen this often, Valdez, but this is actually brilliant <laughs> by Maru. This is it's like, so obnoxious. Yeah. It's, it's awful. Oh, it's like, oh, you want to be safe against potential one base all in? Well, let me just block your natural forever. <laughs> I mean, the Zealot is at least going to be able to still work on it. If he would have lost the Zealot against the Reaper, it would have been an absolute disaster because... I mean, I don't even think that we can finish this game ever. We have to wait for the Adept to kill the Barracks. Yeah, that Oops. Zealot might still die. One more hit would do it. Oh he gets God. it, and he gets away with the Reaper, too. Or will he? He's going to try to put on the moves. Oh, that was really close, actually, to getting away. There was a second Adept in the main. But, yeah, just one probe, two Adepts getting to work on that. And back at home, Maru. Not a lot of anti-air, though. And that's actually something to be pretty worried about. I mean, a single Cyclone is just not going to be enough. Two Cyclones is going to make his life a little bit easier. Uh, I believe there is a single Marine. Nope, there is not a single Marine. So it's just going to be double Cyclone. How well do two Cyclones do against Oracles in this day and age? Well, we're about to find out. And it seems like the timing for Maru was really planned out, too, where he scouted the Stargate. He's like, okay, I can get two Cyclones out just in time. He's going to make a third one, even, and a Viking. So extra safety here for Maru. Oh, Phoenix is going to be the follow-up for us, and I do like that as well. Obviously, he doesn't need any sort of Void Ray. Void Ray would have been relatively solid against maybe a one base contain of tanks and liberators, mm. but if the game plays out normal and there's going to be an expand, Void Ray is just kind of fall off. You need to make something very, very special happen mm -hmm. to make Void Ray somehow worth the investment. Phoenix is, however, pretty solid against Cyclones. Yeah, and you were talking about that barracks blocking the natural. Well, it's not an unmade engineering base so he can actually lift it off once again and it lives so he can eventually get that back home and he is not going to lose that barracks so very very cheeky play with the barracks block there does eventually expand now i kind of had the feeling that maro just wanted this game and perhaps the series to get over with i mean it's been a very long day for him as well so i kind of thought he was just going to go super yolo on his proxy but now it kind of seems like he's playing it very seriously and he's just transitioning out of his proxy barracks it's almost like he has something to prove. He's being even ultra safe against the double yeah. oracle, like the triple cyclone and the Viking just to make sure. And now two missile turrets too. It's just overly safe, even though somehow Arsum is still finding some damage here and there. I think the first push is going to be incredibly powerful of Maru though. Like he's actually going to fly that barracks home, so he's going to have a little bit more production. But he's going to have quite a few Marines now, right now. I mean, the potential to build five, perhaps soon five or even six Marines mm -hmm. if he lands this one as well. And then he's going to have multiple Cyclones plus one attack as well. 
it's going to be very, very difficult to deal with if you don't have Colossus or, or anything like that as Hearthstone. Yeah, what really is the response here for us? I mean, he does just finish up that robotics facility. I guess he's going to need some immortals because he has seen the cyclones. And if you try to fight all these cyclones mm -hmm. with just gateway units, it's really going to be just a nightmare. There's no other way to put it. Yeah, no Twilight Tech either, not even close. So Robotics Facility and one Immortal is started. Looks like that is th going to be the focus here. He does finish up his third Nexus too. So we'll see if he can hold that here. It looks like Maru is just staying on two base for as long as possible. And as you said, that massive push is Whoa. going to be extremely hard. Did he forget Warp Gate or something? Yeah, it's quite late. That's really late. <laughs> it's 6 15 right now. Yeah. It's not even finished. Oh my god. <laughs> huh. Oh. Maybe a bit of nerves facing Mario. Not sure. Harsim doesn't really seem to be the player that would get nervous in well, this kind of match. Especially not in a series like this, right? Where there isn't yeah. that much on the line for him anymore. And so he does take this army one more time. But once again, this is a really powerful push. It reminds me a tiny bit of the push that the Muslim went for against Ni, nee, but that was different. It was a little bit earlier and was more to contain. But if you don't have a Colossus out and the first Colossus isn't out yet, Guardian Shield is going to help a little bit. Perhaps Stasis can save the day. If he actually can is it? able to trap these Cyclones, that's a big, big Stasis ward here for Harston. But does he have enough? Well, he gets two of the Cyclones oh there. God. Really nice Widowmine hit. And now the Stim in. He immediately focuses down that Immortal as well. Will back out out of the overcharge range and just wait for those Cyclones, perhaps. That was a gnarly Widowmine hit, Valdez. Not only the Adept, but the Sentry died as well. And Guardian Shield is so incredibly important against Cyclones. Because without Guardian Shield, these Stalkers, they die so quickly. Harston just tries to survive a little bit longer. He will have one more Photon Overcharge. He's actually going to cast it on the other pylon as well. And that was a massive uh, connection on a couple of those Terran units. Yeah, Maru perhaps not expecting that at this point. But still keeping the contain on, waiting it out. He does have three Widow Mines out here. Trying to snipe one was Harston. He just barely does get it. No vision of the other one, though, and there's not a single observer on the map either. But Harstim did buy enough time for himself. Hmm. Now this Widowmine does get attacked to get one Colossus out, and that obviously gives him a much better chance to survive and fight against his Terran army. Looks like Maru, though, confident to come in here and at least wipe out all the gateway units. And as they all do just disappear, the Mothership Core even getting pretty low. Is he going to focus on that Colossus? It's going to get really, really close. Even trying to ferry in that Widowmine, not quite working out. Maru perhaps trying to be a little bit too cute here trying to kill Arsim in this game. Yeah, there's just nothing left anymore for Arsim though. He lost all of the pylons, and so now it's going to be very hard to reinforce. Look at this slow warping. I mean, that's just painful. This Colossus is trapped. I don't think he can recall out of it. The Liberator sieging on top of this Protoss army. And Maru is showing no respect at all. He's just stimming forward, yeah. and he's just killing Arsim. He's just going in for it. And at this point, no anti-air, really. The Liberator is going to finish off that last Colossus. Can just re-siege here. The last ditch attempt to try to kill that Liberator, and that he does. And that is going to force Maru back for now. Yeah, but he lost 13 workers. He lost the Colossus. I believe there is one more Colossus. Where's the Rally? I don't think it was Rally. It actually finished up a <laughs> while ago. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, that would have been so helpful in that fight. I mean, losing all the pylons as well. This time there won't be any Photon Overcharge. Yeah. There isn't that much Revelation anymore. It's also 1-1 one, one for our Terran against 0-0 zero, zero Protoss units. And, I mean, these Protoss units are just dying. They're yep. melting away. And there is nothing that he can do about it. Mars has been in this position before for many, many years. Just micro against the Gateway units, snipe out the Colossi. This is what he's best known for. And that he's going to do. GG, Maru takes game number one in very simple fashion. Yeah, that's actually a very cool build, though. He opens up with the proxy, and I kind of thought, like, all right, he really is not in yeah. the mood for this series at all. But then he played pretty serious. He floated over the barracks, just forced this awkward opening build order from Harstam. And I do wonder what would have happened if Harstam would have just gone the regular route, right? He would still try to go for uh, one gate expand very quickly. Is mm -hmm. he able to get the probe there, or is the Reaper too annoying? I don't know. That's kind of hard to say. But I like what Maru did there. And then the follow-up, I mean, he even ran into the stasis. Imagine if that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. It would have been even harder for Harsh. A couple of survive. extra Cyclones yeah. getting to work on those gateway units. Yeah, Maru, you know, he's Korean, right? He's one of these players where it's like, I feel like in his mind, he says to himself, what builds are good on this map? And what do I feel like doing? He's like, okay, this build, this kind of timing push is quite strong. Also, I have this really fancy opening that I can mix with it. And, I mean, just executed very 
very well there. Yeah, so I wonder what would have happened done. if the Widowmine didn't get that sick connection off. Because obviously getting the mm. Adept is nice, but getting the Sentry as well. Guardian Shield is pretty much the most important thing that Hearthstone has there. Because the Cyclones, instead of like, you know, three damage, they do one or something. They yeah. do a whole lot less damage after a Guardian Shield. Because uh, they shoot so incredibly quick, so reducing two damage of it is massive. Yeah. However, uh, the... You know, the sentry dying in the late warp gate, he only had a single sentry available. Yeah. That made and it much harder to if hold. If the Widowmine didn't hit, if he had the second Colossus come out and it was actually rallied and helped out there, and if he was able to somehow hold on, he was fighting three base versus two. I, I at least didn't see a third command center no. coming out of Mars, so it was, was semi-all-in. He was at least going to be behind yeah, if but the push didn't work out. The only thing that Maru did have going for himself again is that he already had 1-1 one, one upgrades, and mm -hmm. Harstam, I don't think he had a single fort. So yeah. It's kind of just a weird spot because you never really want to be forced to start producing like Oracles, even doubling Oracle before mm -hmm. you have your Nexus up and running. And then everything else is a little bit later, and I think because of the weird opening by Maru, and he's busy like microing the Zealot around, and suddenly you realize, like, oh, I've got no warp gate. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes life pretty hard as Protoss. Yeah, things not really working out for Hurstam in that first game, but we are jumping into game number two here. It is going to be on Daybreak for this TVP. Looking at the bright side of life, he didn't face any tanks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, maybe he'll uh, get a taste of that in game number two, perhaps. I hope not, man. It's already <laughs> been a rough day for Kev. Meanwhile, Maru has been smooth sailing, pretty much secured himself $8,000 already as he's going to go straight into the quarterfinals. Yeah. He doesn't have to do any playoff matches. He won his group very, very convincingly, and that's not a huge surprise, right? A lot of people saw Maru as one of the absolute favorites. Some people think that it's like a two-horse race between Maru and TY. Mm -hmm. I think it's not that simple. I don't think it's that black and yeah. white, but obviously they are two of the top favorites in this tournament. Yeah, TY has also got a lot of hard opponents in his group, so... Let's not push him through just yet. We'll have to wait and see until tomorrow. But we are jumping into game number two. Down in the bottom left, the red Protoss. It is, of course, Harstam. Going to have to win two in a row. And over here, on the, top, on the right top side <laughs> of Daybreak, looking at the main base of the man who's into the mood to proxy, it's Maru. He's Maru. just feeling it, man. It's in the air. Yeah. I mean... He does have the potential to end the game sooner, but it I, would have been I would amazing hope. if Hoysom could have just scouted immediately by yeah. the Red Maybe he goes down to the south here and scouts there. Or maybe he, no. Looks like he's just going for a simple scout. As he did in game number one, he is going to know what's coming pretty fast, at least. You know, I would just return the favor and build three gateways in my <laughs> opponent's <laughs> base. <laughs> yeah. Still die against a single Reaper, but it doesn't matter. Just to prove a point. <laughs> Yeah. I wish he would. I actually thought for a second that maybe he would go down for some kind of proxy, and this game would get really interesting. Now he's going to see the same thing and be like, okay, <laughs> well. I think, well, should I do the same thing as I did in the previous game, or should I handle it a little bit differently? We'll see. Yeah. Make sure to remember that warp gate research. That's the first step. That does help a lot. I, I still think his target is, is a proper answer because I think it's good against all sort of one base all ins. Uh, he obviously doesn't have to open double Oracle if it would be a one base all in. But the Oracle does have a lot of potential. And I think a lot of Terrans would have perhaps not been ready. Or if you have a single Oracle, you're still going to end up losing six, seven SCVs. However, what made it incredibly complicated was the second Oracle. And that actually, or excuse me, the Cyclone of uh, Maru. Mm -hmm. But that just made it impossible for the Oracle to do any damage at all. Uh oh. Yep. So seeing the mirror of what we saw in game number one, although that one probe getting a little bit more damage this time, you can even see that barracks floating on over to the natural in the meantime. Man, I really hope that this is not going to become a thing in this matchup. Cause this oh, seems that's so annoying. This seems really <laughs> annoying, actually. I mean, this time he does have a Mothership core, so he's going to have some more constant DPS. Uh -huh. That's going to help a little bit. The Reaper is going to find one more probe. Will the Reaper get it? Yes, it will. He's not done there. Like I feel he like he has to be a little bit more passive with that Zelly. He has to pull it back once he gets that Adept out for sure. Robotics facility this time is what you were talking about in game number one. Switching it up. It's a lot better against potential one base pushes, I think. But on the other hand, once you have the Robo, you also just kind of sit there and like, okay, I've got a Robo now. I guess the only thing you can do after it is just expand and try to go up to Colossus perhaps a little bit quicker in the way, you know. Some of the other protoses worldwide like to do, Showtime mm. being one of them. Man, I'm looking forward to his games tomorrow. Those are going to be some sick games. 
Yeah, Those I, two groups I, I look very, forward very close. To, yeah, for sure. I mean, Group D is a lot of fun, and Showtime against TY. Apparently, they've met on ladder, and things look relatively okay for even a couple of the foreign protoses that have ran into TY. So, but once again, you know, ladder and tournament is a different ball game, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Uh, but I'm super excited for Group C tomorrow. If you guys just joined us or you're not exactly sure what's happening, Group C is going to be amazing. It has Major, Scarlet, Neep, Elazer, and apparently Ayasonu is also in incredible shape at the moment. So even the Chinese Zerg is going to have a pretty good yeah. shot. That group is just madness, man. It's, it's going to be so fun. kind of interesting to see how well the Chinese players are doing just on that note because XY as well, he, he was something like 3-0 yeah. oh at some point. He's 4-0 at the moment. He's 4-0. Oh? Like, yeah. That's ridiculous. He won his group. <laughs> He's actually <laughs> in the quarterfinals. I mean, that's great. Meanwhile, we've got, oh my god, the two passing ships in the night. I really oh didn't want to go there. But uh, the War Prism, that's cute and looks fancy. The double Cyclone drop, if... Horsem doesn't fold an overcharge immediately. He's going to be in trouble, man. Cyclones are incredibly powerful. Oh, the focus fire, and he loses one of the cyclones, micro. but... Okay. Not the best micro there. At least he does snipe a pylon, but... What happened at home? Two adapts got dropped and did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Feels bad to be a Protoss, man. Like, your drops is just so much <laughs> less impressive. Oh, you gotta pick up the cyclone. Okay, does it at the last second. It's really good for Arsene that he had double fault and overcharge because a single fault and overcharge, I really don't think it would have caught it at all. And if both Cyclones survive, from that point on, you really have to show so much respect to those units and it's going to be very hard to engage them. However, you know, double fault and overcharge, even if it's just for a couple of so seconds, helps out so much. You see how fast that Adept takes damage the second it gets dropped out? You just, you can barely even drop it out. You see he's just using fight the <laughs> Medivac to come out. He's like, maybe I can fight it, it's low health. No, you can't. Cyclones are, are pretty good. Man, what a funny opening by uh, Maru. Both games and different follow-ups as well. But this once again looks incredibly frustrating and annoying to go up against early on. It's a proxy reaper and they're always frustrating. I mean, there are some games where I end up losing like five probes against a proxy reaper. You're mm. like, oh, I hate grenades. <laughs> it's like every grenade just trolls the, the probes right on top of the reaper. You're like, oh my <laughs> god, how bad am I in this game? And then, like, the barracks follow-up as well, blocking the Nexus from going down. It's like the <laughs> tilt build, man. Yeah, it really it just is. Does, it's so annoying, more than anything else. Even if it doesn't get that much damage, no. as you see Hearthstone, like, doesn't really take that much damage. But it just feels like you're behind as a Protoss. If, you, if your Nexus yeah. is that late, it just feels like you're behind. Oh, my God, there's no pylons powering this. Uh, Look or at this. Is he just going to get the Cyber Core? Uh, it looks like with the warp in. And and he's going to get a couple over. stalkers, maybe. Well, at least one. Oh, that's unbelievable. Yeah, he didn't want to overstay his welcome after <laughs> uh, more stalkers showed up. Obviously, if the stalkers shoot at the medevac, that would mean that everything is trapped and committed. Yeah. He's going to come back. He really <laughs> wants the cyber core. Fault and overcharge? No. Mm, yeah, it looks like he will. What? That last. That as was. the laser's coming out, he picks it up. It's like as it makes the connection, he picks yeah. it up. That was gross. Oh, and by the way... That one barracks from earlier scouted the entire base of the Protoss while that was happening. Like, he, he saw everything. It even <laughs> saw where the units were, which allowed the drop to do a little bit of damage. Yeah. I feel like Maru is just having fun. Look at the HP on this thing. Free HP. Yeah. Why not? He is kind of just, you know, he's, I don't, I, I'd like to say it that way as well. Like, he's just kind of having fun. Yeah. I'll, I'll just put it that way as well. I mean, unless he actually shows us this in the quarterfinals, in the semifinals as well, if he goes up against Protoss. I do think that these pushes, once again, are incredibly hard to deal with. I think multiple force fields will actually make Harsim's life a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But just a few more sentries overall. Guardian Shield really, like, nullifies the Cyclone quite a bit. Against Stalkers, they still do all right. But against Adepts and stuff, they really do no damage at all if they are protected by Guardian Shield. But if you don't have Guardian Shield, it just feels like all these Protoss units, they melt incredibly quick. Yeah, the one thing going for Hearthstone this time is that he didn't take a third base, and he's going to have two Colossi with range very soon. So, still, as I say that, still a lot of units coming in here. Going straight for the Colossus, no Micro on that, just gets sniped out immediately. I think he lost maybe one Marauder in that trade. Just going to back off, heal up. Now the War Prism in the natural is doing a little bit of work as three SCVs did go down, but he was forced to pick these adapts up again. It's very ballsy that Hossam is paying that much attention to the Prism, while this Terran army is knocking on his front door and Maru is focus fire on everything. It's just incredibly good. He picks up all three Cyclones there as well. Are the adapts able to do something? Uh, barely. A couple of SCVs perhaps. A little bit. One. Yeah. 
Maybe he diverted the attention slightly there of Maru. You saw that Maru was forced to go back as just a big warping of stalkers came out. Maru makes this all look so easy. He's just pulling so far ahead in these games. And it feels like, oh, these trades are relatively even, right? And then you look at the numbers and you're like, oh, no. Harsim <laughs> is down 20 army supply. It's not even close. Yeah. So Harsim doesn't have an upgrade. Harsim is just now going to warp in his third nexus while this third CC is about to finish up. I, I really feel that this is almost Maru. Or like I don't want to say this normally, but it really feels like he's not in super tryhard mode. He's just kind of playing his game. He's having a good time repairing his units, trying to show off a little bit. And meanwhile, he's just like almost cruising to victory. Yeah, I mean, Maru just, you know, he made it look easy against Nergio. And that was the one player in the group where we were like, okay, this guy has a legitimate chance against Maru. Yeah. He can actually defeat this guy. And then he got slammed. It was like 0-2, and we were like... Okay, I guess Nurtio is not really up to snuff. And then Maru, I guess from that and you know the, the all the games that he's won, he's just looking so so confident. He's just not losing anything. Like it's actually insane. This next is a little bit exposed. There's only a single pile, and maybe the Colossus and a Guardian Shield can save the day here. But look at all these Marauders, and that's a lot oh of stalkers. Man. He's going fantasy style as well. Dropping Widow Mind behind this Proto's army. Oh man, that is fantastic. It's a lot of damage onto that Colossus. And there's just way too much bio pushing on in. All the Protoss units just going to melt in front of our eyes. And that is going to be the end of Harstam. GG. Maru taking a quick 2-0. Feldes, I would have loved to be screaming my lungs out over here. I would have loved to go crazy. But once again, 